What I talked about in my lecture was the importance of, first of all, finding all the genes that cause the disease, and then developing drugs that work on those genes or the pathways that the genes activate in cancer and cause the cancer. And then, which is my speciality, designing drugs that specifically work on those genes and those pathways that cause the disease. And that way, if we can link the genes to the drugs, we can then truly do personalized medicine. I talked about three projects in the, as examples in the talk. Uh, the most advanced one is what we call PI3 kinase inhibitors. It's a technical term, but it's a, it's, a, it's a drugs that we've developed that are now in the clinic. And I talked about some of the early promising results from the clinic, in fact, uh, where one of these genes that causes the disease, we've developed a drug against that, and, and now it's showing activity in the clinic. I also talked about a different class of drugs, which are quite exciting, also in the clinic that we've developed. We call these HSB90 inhibitors. These are inhibitors of a complicated system called chaperones. Putting it very simply, they work by protecting the genes that cause cancer or the pathways that cause the cancer. And so if you can block those chaperones, you can have a really powerful effect on the cancer. So I, I talked about those. And then finally, I talked about uh, another class of drugs that we're developing very much earlier stage. And these are against a target called PPM1D. And I use this as an example to explain the importance of what I call drugging or expanding the druggable genome of cancer. In other words, there's thousands of genes that cause cancer now that we're beginning to understand are involved in cancer. And we need to expand the number of genes that we can actually develop drugs against. So we call this expanding the druggable genome. And that's the way towards personalized medicine in the future, to define all the genes, develop drugs against all those genes and pathways, and then put them together in mixtures, combinations we call it, that are truly geared to the actual genetics or the genes in, in each individual patient. I think we've come an incredibly long way. I talked about in my um, award lecture, I talked about how when I did my PhD thesis in the 1970s, we really didn't understand very much about cancer, the causes of it, and therefore the drugs that were developed at that time were, were quite poisonous. You know, they had a lot of side effects and still do many of them, al although they are effective. And now I talked about in a 30-year period, we've come a huge way. We understand many of the genes that cause the disease. We've got drugs against many of those genes and pathways. I think now in the next five to ten years we'll see the completion, if you like, of that. We've got the Human Genome Project. That's led then to finding all the cancer genes. And now we need to fill out the final step, if you like, to develop the drugs that work on those genes. And in addition, a really important point is that we need what we call biomarkers. These are tests in the lab where a patient will come into a clinic and they'll have a test, maybe a DNA test, and that will tell the doctor treating the patient which drug they need to, to be given or which combination of drugs they need to be given for their own cancer.